So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And again, I'd first like to thank the Society for the privilege of giving this uh, presentation. It's called Syntax at Four Years, but what I'm going to do is show syntax in the context of how we got to syntax and also one or two other very important studies that have come out just now, one of them in the New England Journal of Medicine called the ACERT trial, and we'll try and link all of this together. Um, I've declared my conflicts of interest before. One of them is that I was one of the 25 ESC, EX guideline writers on myocardial revascularization, and I will talk about this later. It's important to be aware that there is no evidence whatsoever that the use of stents has any beneficial effect on patients in addition to optimal medical therapy. And this is a paper from Archives of Internal Medicine published about a month ago, eight trials, almost 8,000 patients with a mean follow-up of over four years. And when you looked at death, non-fatal MI, repeat revascularization, and recurrent angina, none of these were significantly better in the patients who received stents, although there was a lower incidence of revascularization and recurrent angina. But the key thing is there was no benefit in terms of reduction of death or non-fatal MI. And the authors concluded initial stent implantation for stable coronary artery disease shows no evidence of benefit compared with initial medical therapy for prevention of death, non-fatal MI, unplanned revascularization, or angina. The second thing I emphasized this morning was that the results of contemporary cabbage are excellent. And this is the slide I showed earlier of the ART trial of 3,000 patients operated by 67 surgeons in 28 centres in seven countries with a 30-day mortality of just over 1% and a one-year mortality of 2.4% and a one-year incidence of stroke, MI, repeat revascularization, all under 2%. So again, the results of contemporary cabbage are outstanding. I also showed this slide, but perhaps some of you weren't here this morning, and it's what we need to do when we look at the evidence base for an intervention and this is particularly relevant to cabbage versus PCI. So the randomized trial is unquestionably the gold standard because it eliminates bias. But as we'll see, it can have a lot of potential weaknesses. Small numbers of patients only involving a small percentage of the eligible population. This results often in atypical patient populations with short durations of follow-up and large numbers of crossovers. And the second form of evidence that we can look at are propensity match registries, often containing tens of thousands of patients and representing what we actually do in clinical practice, but with the potential weakness of confounding or bias by factors that we both might know about and those that we don't. Now, if we look at what evidence we knew existed prior to the publication of the four-year results of syntax trial, there have been two randomized trials looking at the impact of any type of revascularization on patient outcomes. The first was this meta-analysis by Halatki in The Lancet in 2009. Ten randomized trials of cabbage versus PCI involved almost 8,000 patients, a median follow-up of six years. The hazard ratio for death was lower with cabbage at 0.91, but this did not reach statistical significance. But in terms of the hazard ratio for death in both diabetic patients and patients aged over 65 years of age, there was a highly significant benefit of cabbage over PCI. And a second analysis by Jeremiah in the American Journal of Medicine, they looked at 28 randomized trials of either cabbage or PCI versus optimal medical therapy, follow up at three years, and again a very significant reduction in the hazard ratio of death with cabbage, and that's in some reduction which just reached statistical significance for PCI in relation to optimal medical therapy. Now, in 2006, I was privileged to give the Ferguson Lecture in the United States, and the title of my paper was Coronary Artery Bypass Grafting is Still the Best Treatment for Multivessel and Left Main Disease, But Patients Need to Know. And this summarized and examined the 15 trials at that time of PCI versus cabbage, and the point I made in this lecture was that although almost 9,000 patients had been enrolled into these trials, this was only 5% of the total potentially eligible population. Furthermore, of these trial patients, two-thirds of them actually had single or double vessel disease with normal left ventricular function. Only 40% had proximal LAD disease, 
and only 79% received an internal mammary artery. And the point I made was that the trials actually failed to show a survival benefit of cabbage over PTI as they had only included patients in whom it could be predicted that there was no prognostic benefit from any kind of revascularization. The only exception to this, as we'll see, is the syntax trial, and we'll come back to why that is such an important trial. Now, the next thing we need to look at if I'm saying there's not really evidence from randomized trials to support the use of PCI, what about in real clinical practice? And the answer is even more convincingly no. So if you look at some important bits of evidence, the first being the New York Registry, which was a, composed actually of two databases, but essentially contained almost 60,000 patients with at least two vessel disease, propensity match for both cardiac and non-cardiac comorbidity. And we can see that by three years, there's an absolute survival benefit of cabbage by five percentage points. And the other important thing when we look at this slide is we see that the survival curves are continuing to diverge at three years, suggesting that with further follow-up, the benefits of cabbage may be even greater. And if we look at the need for repeat intervention, 35% of patients undergoing PCI, in other words, sevenfold higher than what we saw for cabbage. So whenever we look at any studies comparing PCI and cabbage, if we don't have at least a minimum of three years follow-up, we can't really say anything about what is the more effective strategy. Now, this is a paper published in Annals of Thoracic Surgery last year called Long-Term Mortality of Cabbage and Bare Metal Stenting. And this is an important paper because it's the longest paper, or the paper with the longest natural history in terms of outcome of what happens following PCI or cabbage. So 7,200 patient pairs, propensity match for 32 preoperative factors and with eight years follow-up. And what they show is that by the time you get to eight years after surgery, there's an overall a 7% reduction in mortality if you've had cabbage rather than PCI. Now, the important thing they went also went on to do is that when they analysed these patients according to whether there was three-vessel disease or two-vessel disease, with or without proximal LED disease, in every single category, there was a marked survival benefit with cabbage, varying from 13% with three-vessel proximal disease, proximal LED disease, down to 3%, even with two-vessel disease, with or without pro proximal LED disease. And before people say, well, but that was bare metal stents and the results would have been better with drug eluting stents, the answer is no, they wouldn't. Although drug eluting stents reduce the incidence of restenosis, they have been repeatedly shown not to improve clinical outcome in terms of survival or reduction in myocardial infarction in comparison to bare metal stents. So even if there had been bare metal stents used in these studies, you wouldn't have expected any different outcome. And you may have seen this paper published online in the New England Journal of Medicine, the ACERT trial, on March the 27th. This looked at almost 190,000, almost 190,000 propensity match patients from the ACC and the STS databases. And what they showed was, by the time you got to just over four years, there was a 4.4 survival benefit for cabbage. That, that is equivalent to a hazard ratio of reduction in death to 0 0.79, so highly both statistically and clinically significant in favour of cabbage. The other thing, again, if you look at the survival curves, you can see that at four years they are continuing to diverge, again implying that with further follow-up, the survival advantage of cabbage will be even greater. And if you look at the subgroup analysis in this study, if you look at all these different factors, whether it was age, above or below 75, gender, BMI, race, the presence or absence of diabetes, the presence or absence of lung dysfunction or peripheral vascular disease, whether the patient had a prior MI or not, whether the patient had impaired renal function of differing severity, whether the ejection fraction was normal or impaired, looking at the overall risk to the patient, looking at whatever pattern of severity of coronary artery disease in every single category, cabbage had a clear survival advantage. And this is the reality of what we deal with in daily practice.
If you summarise all of these, including the existing databases, there are now 10 databases in the literature with propensity match patients. If you add up these numbers, they now come to over 300,000 patients, some with and without diabetes, some with bare metal stents, some with drug eluting stents, and follow-up varying from 1 to 10 years, but in every single category, there is a marked improvement in survival with cabbage over PCI. So what we can say is that cabbage consistently results in a survival advantage of around 5% by 3 to 5 years of follow-up, and cabbage decreases the need absolutely in terms of re-intervention by a factor of 5 over PCI. So this really gives us an important warning about what we could likely predict what syntax trial will show. So in similar to the way we talked about on-pump and off-pump surgery, in the Lancet in 2009, I was asked to write an editorial addressing what was going on with PCI and cabbage. And I made this point again, trying to address the discrepancy between what randomised trials were telling us, where they said that there was no difference in outcome between cabbage and PCI, and the registries, which seemed to tell us something very different. Most significantly, the randomised trials only enrolled around 5 to 10 per cent of the eligible population the majority of whom had single or double vessel disease and normal left ventricular function, a group in whom it was already well established that there was no prognostic benefit of cabbage. By largely excluding patients with a known survival benefit from cabbage, such as left main and triple vessel coronary artery disease, the trials ignored the prognostic benefit of surgery in more complex coronary artery disease. Nevertheless, the inappropriate generalisation of the trial results from their highly select populations to most patients with multivessel disease has been ubiquitous in the literature and has, at least in part, justified the explosive growth in PCI in developed countries. So let, now let's turn to the Syntax trial, because this landmark trial is unquestionably the most important trial there's ever been of PCI versus cabbage. It's designed to look actually at the five-year outcomes of death and major adverse cardiac and cerebrovascular ev events. And there's two very important things to point out about syntax, even before we look at the results of the randomised component. The first is that in comparison to the other 19 trials of PCI versus cabbage, which all enrolled very highly selected populations, syntax was a relative all-comer trial. So it was different from every other trial of PCI versus cabbage. But even so, it also another unique strength was it had a parallel nested registry. And what that meant was it wanted to look at the outcome of those patients who were, for whatever reason, deemed ineligible for randomization. And the first thing to note is that one third of all patients who were potentially enrolled into syntax went straight to bypass grafting because the severity of their disease was considered to preclude even an attempt at PCI. So let's look at syntax in two ways. I'm going to first show you the results for three-vessel disease, and these are the results at four years, and the five-year results of syntax should be published this year. So at four years, we can see there were 550 patients with three-vessel disease, each in the PCI and cabbage groups. And the key points to take away is that there was almost an absolute reduction in five percentage points in death, a reduction in cardiac death by 4.1%, a reduction in MI by 6%, and a reduction in repeat revascularization by almost 13%. All very highly statistically significant. And the other key thing to note is here, if you look at stroke, despite what the cardiologist repeatedly say as their mantra, there was no difference in the incidence of stroke for three-vessel disease at four years between PCI and cabbage. And none of this should be surprises, because this data from syntax is entirely consistent with what the propensity match registries have been showing us for over a decade. And again, I would em emphasize a point, no difference in the incidence of stroke between PCI and cabbage. Now, if you look at these results in a bit more detail according to the severity of the coronary artery disease, as defined by syntax scores below 23, 23 to 32, or above 32, we can see that it's in the lower risk patients 
less than 23, there was no difference between death for PCI and cabbage, although there was still a significant reduction in the need for repeat revascularization in the lower risk patients. In the intermediate and the higher risk patients, there was a very significant survival benefit for cabbage. Note that by the time you get into the highest risk population, the difference in survival is almost eight percentage points in favor of cabbage, accompanied by a marked reduction in myocardial infarction and the need for repeat revascularization. And this is a slide I've shown before, and I always try to show this to the cardiologist because most cardiologists don't understand coronary artery disease. If we ask the question, why does cabbage have such a survival benefit over PCI? It's because anatomically, atheroma is mainly located in the proximal coronary arteries. And the implications for this during cabbage is twofold. The first is that because we place bypass grafts to the mid-coronary vessel, we achieve two things. We bypass and therefore effectively treat the culprit region, regardless of its complexity. It doesn't matter how severe or complex it is. When you're grafting the mid-vessel, it becomes irrelevant. And the second point is that over the longer term, cabbage offers prophylaxis against future culprit lesions by protecting whole zones of vulnerable proximal myocardium in what is diffusely unstable coronary endothelium. In contrast, PCI with stents can only treat suitable localised proximal culprit lesions, but has no prophylactic benefit against new disease, which can develop either proximal to, within, or immediately distal to the stent, thereby nullifying the benefit of the stent. The second thing is PCI means incomplete revascularization. And Hannon showed in a series of 22,000 patients undergoing PCI that almost 70% had incomplete revascularization. And the subsequent mortality of these patients correlated directly with the degree of incompleteness of revascularization. This is why PCI is unlikely to ever match the results of cabbage for most multivessel and left main disease. Initially, the cardiologists tried balloon angioplasty against surgery, and when it didn't work, they said, that's because we weren't using stents. So they then compared bare metal stents against cabbage, and when that didn't work, they said, that's because we weren't using drug-eluting stents. And when they used drug-eluting stents against cabbage, and drug-eluting stents still remained inferior, they said, that's because we used the wrong kind of drug-eluting stent. But their fundamental problem when they shift the goalposts is they don't understand the difference in the pathophysiology of what both interventions are achieving. If I now turn to left main and do this quite briefly, back in 2008, myself and several other Europeans and Americans, both cardiologists and surgeons, did a total review of all the evidence in the literature at that time regarding the treatment of left main disease. And we came to the conclusion that cabbage should indeed remain the preferred revascularization treatment in good surgical candidates with unprotected left main stem stenosis. And we predicated that again on two fairly basic pathophysiological observations. The first is that up to 90% of left main disease are distal or bifurcation lesions, and we know that these are at very high risk of restenosis with stenting. And the second thing is that up to 90% of patients with left main disease already have multivessel disease, where, as we've seen, cabbage already offers a survival advantage independent of the presence of left main disease. So if you look at the syntax results at four years for the 705 patients with left main, here we actually see a different pattern from what we saw for three-vessel disease. If you look at the incidence of death, it's almost identical between PCI and cabbage. There is a reduction in cardiac death and MI with cabbage, but it's not statistically significant. There is a significant reduction in the incidence of repeat revascularization in favor of cabbage, but note that the downside of cabbage now seems to be a higher incidence of stroke. So these results are different from what we saw for three-vessel disease where cabbage had a marked survival benefit and no difference in the incidence of stroke from PCI. Now, again, if we divide these results according to the complexity of the coronary artery disease, 
we can see that in the lower and the intermediate groups, the death rate for cabbage was actually higher than it was for PCI. Whereas if we look at the high risk group, those with scores over above 32, we can see a marked reduction in mortality with cabbage. So it seems to be that in the patients with left main disease of lower complexity, PCI is at least as good as, if indeed not superior to cabbage, whereas in the higher risk groups, cabbage remains the better therapy. And these patients are the subject and currently being enrolled into a trial called the XL trial. This is a trial of 2,600 patients who will be randomised to PCI versus cabbage. But note the crucial thing in this trial. You can only include patients with syntax scores below 33. And we, the surgeons, insisted on in that to stop the cardiologists doing trials in low-risk <coughs> patients and then generalising the results to all left main. So this trial is very clearly a trial only in patients with syntax scores below 33. It will also have a 1,000 patient registry. I actually enrolled the first patient in this trial in September 2010 in Oxford, and to date 375 patients have been enrolled. But there are currently about, there will be 160 sites in the world taking part in this, and there are currently 80 activated, so still some more activation to go. There's one other important trial of PCI versus cabbage in left main disease, again published in the New England Journal of Medicine last year. This is called the pre-combat trial, a 600-patient trial done in Korea. If you look at the overall cohort of patients, notice that almost 60% of patients were not randomised. In this trial of the patients who were randomised, the mean syntax score was 25 versus 30 in the original syntax trial. The mean Euroscore 2.7 versus 3.8 in syntax. So both lower overall risk and overall lower severity of coronary artery disease. And the primary endpoint was a composite of death, CVA, MI, and repeat revascularization. And if we look at three years, we can see that the primary endpoint was in 12% of the PCI group, 8% of the cabbage group. So cabbage was much superior in terms of an almost 30% reduction in that composite endpoint. However, if we look at the primary endpoint and remove the need for repeat revascularization, then we see no difference in outcome in terms of death, CVA, or MI. But this trial is also encouraging in some ways. Notice that the overall incidence of stroke was 0.4% for PCI and only 07 for cabbage, so much lower than the incidence of stroke that we saw in syntax for left main disease. And also, in contradistinction to syntax, there was no increased mortality with cabbage in these lower risk patients. So these results are really quite different from what syntax suggested, but they are the very patients who are being rolled in the XL trial, so we will get a definite answer to which is a superior therapy. Now if I go back to the esc EX guidelines, published in 2010. Notice that this is for indications for cabbage versus PCI in stable patients with lesions suitable for both procedures and where there is a low predicted surgical mortality. And the point I want to make is this, these table, this table actually stresses in the most severe patterns of coronary artery disease, cabbage appears to offer a survival advantage as well as a marked reduction in the need for repeat revascularization. And the point to take away from all of this today is that as we practice in contemporary routine clinical workloads, almost 80% of patients with three-vessel disease in today's practice have syntax scores above 22. And notice they have a class 3A indication for PCI, meaning these patients should only be considered for cabbage unless they're not fit for that procedure. If we look at left main disease and those with syntax scores above 33, it's two-thirds of all left main patients still have syntax scores above 33. So it's important to remember these numbers when we try to get a balance and a feel for what we should be doing in routine clinical practice. This asterisk refers to the fact that we shouldn't be surprised how well patients 
did with cabbage with syntax scores above 22 because, as I've said, there are 10 propensity match registries with over 300,000 patients showing that very same survival benefit. And the ACC AHA guidelines make very similar recommendations to this, but the Americans take far, much, far longer to do it. They don't have as neat, as simple a summary as this. So how do I summarise and conclude all this? I would say, first, that in today's practice, 79% of all patients with three-vessel disease and two-thirds of all patients with left main disease have a strong survival advantage with cabbage, which is apparent even by, in fact, three years. Cabbage data for three-vessel disease is entirely consistent with several propensity match registries showing this similar strong survival benefit. There is no difference in the incidence of stroke between PCI and cabbage for three-vessel disease. There is conflicting data between syntax and pre-combat about the risk of death and stroke with cabbage versus PCI in the low and intermediate left main groups. And these patients, as I've said, are now the subject of the ongoing XL trial. And my own view is that I think probably PCI will turn out to be the better treatment for these patients who have the lower risk left mains. And the reason I say that is I think there's probably just too much competitive flow for bypass grafts if you do not have additional severe proximal coronary artery disease. Although we haven't had time to discuss it in this talk, I would say that we should all be following guidelines and if you follow guidelines, the cardiologist will always say we don't have time to discuss every patient with the MDT. And the answer should always be you don't need to. If you're following guidelines, you do not need to discuss every patient. But you should reserve the MDTs for interventions which are not following guidelines. I think guidelines are very important. I've changed my mind dramatically on them from 10 years ago, where I would have said most doctors know what they're doing or should be doing. I've changed my mind completely. I think we should all have to follow guidelines. And I think the great thing about guidelines are their transparency. We can all see how the decision was made in an individual patient. And I think they protect not only the interests of the patients, I think they protect the interests of doctors as well. And finally, my own view is that statutory bodies or those who pay for interventions should only do so if it can be demonstrated that that intervention followed guidelines or was otherwise agreed by a multidisciplinary team. On that point, I'm going to conclude my talk. I would like to thank the Society again for the privilege of giving this presentation and again, you, the audience, for your attention. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I wonder maybe if you should have questions after the, the trials are quite different, so perhaps we should have the questions on the, uh, on the uh, PCI and syntax story now and have some questions later as well. Thank you. We left a little bit confused about the one year syntax data about the 2.2% versus, I think, 0.6% stroke rate. Vis-a-vis -vis what you say now for three. So how do you reconcile these two conflicting facts? It, it, what it clearly shows is that at the time of an acute intervention, you have a slightly higher incidence of stroke with cabbage. But with the follow-up, the PCI patients, they, do, they had an ongoing higher increasing incidence of stroke. So the figures at four years are absolutely crystal clear, and that is there is no difference in stroke for three-vessel disease. At four years. Well, there's no difference by the time you get to two years, but at four years, it still means, you know, th that point is re-emphasized. Perhaps I could ask a question about the guidelines. Do you know or have a feel for how many units in the country are following European guidelines in terms of revascularization? It's, it's a good question, Chris, but it's too early to say. But what you can definitely say is compared to two years ago, when there weren't this kind of guidelines, the whole scenario has changed quite dramatically. Every single, I, I actually tend to go to more cardiology meetings, in fact, than I do to cardiac surgery. But two years ago, you never heard about this. Every meeting now has sessions and guidelines on how to implement them. And I think what I'd say is, I mean, even in our own hospital, you know, two years ago, the cardiologist would come with an angiogram and they'd present three-vessel disease. And then you had to try and persuade them why you should do a cabbage in the patient. And the, the, 
the scenario has, is completely different because now we say to our own MDTs, this patient has a syntax score above 32, why are we not doing cabbage? So it changes that scenario completely in, in favour of what's happening. The other important thing is in our own area, the SHA um, for Oxford and Southampton, the, they now say that whenever a cardiologist is doing intervention in a non-emergency, so not primary PCI, they now have to fill out a form, one of the questions which say, says, if this patient has three-vessel disease, they should be having CABG. So whereas two or three years ago, essentially, cardiologists could do anything they wanted without being accountable to anyone, that really has changed quite dramatically. Could you just comment on the medical therapy in both groups of patients in syntax, um, since that, that was very important in some of the earlier trials, the differences in medical follow-up? Yeah. Very good question. What was disappointing about syntax was that one of the things that became very clear was when you looked at the post-operative medication, it was far better and more robust in patients undergoing PCI. So if, when you looked at the cabbage patients, in the cabbage patients, it was only about 75% were on a statin compared to 99% of medical patients. And similarly, the cabbage patients were on a, or a far lower percentage of them were on beta blockers, ACE inhibitors, and dual antiplatelet therapy. And the problem for that was not in a place like the United Kingdom, where we here, all our patients are followed by special nurses who ensure that they're all on this treatment. But in places like Germany, when the patient got the cabbage, you know, the surgeon would see them post-operatively and he didn't, just didn't discuss medication. So the cabbage patients in syntax got quite a poor deal. But the cabbage patients in Excel, because of that, there's a much more rigorous protocol for ensuring patients post-operatively, both cabbage and PCI, are getting optimal medical therapy. But there is no question some of the cabbage patients didn't get a good deal in syntax. There is some analysis available in the diabetics in syntax. Yeah. Uh, what are your comments on that? So the, the, the diabetic subgroup was unfortunately underpowered to really make different... So what it showed basically was that if you had diabetes, and especially if you had insulin-dependent diabetes, they came out worst of all in syntax. Their one-year mortality was far higher than cabbage, but because the results were relatively... I'm sorry, because the numbers were relatively low, it didn't reach conventional statistical significance, although it was about a six percentage point difference in one year in mortality. David? Our institution has gotten interested in documenting appropriate use. Do your national databases uh, have the appropriate elements to map to your guidelines so that you'll be able to document appropriate use? Yeah. So what's happening now, in the way that the ACC and the STS have been able to link their databases and come up with a CERT trial, we're doing something very similar in the United Kingdom through CCAD. So that's where all data on both patients undergoing any PCI and CABG will be available for examination. So, so far, whereas the results of cardiac surgery have been intensely scrutinized in the United Kingdom, so far the results of PCI have not been, but that's changing just now. Okay. Okay.